President Biden traveling to Tampa today, continuing to tout his administration's accomplishments in his first two years in office. And meanwhile, there's a hearing happening on Capitol Hill about the Chinese spy balloon, which may have targeted more than 40 countries, including the U.S. Our D.C. Bureau Chief Ben Kennedy live at the White House now following it all. Ben. Calvin, Nicole, the White House says that balloon is part of a broader surveillance program. We'll get to more on that in just a bit. But first, millions of Floridians rely on Medicare and Social Security. As President Biden said moments ago that he will veto any bill that gets rid of it. A part of his post-State of the Union travel, President Biden hit the road Thursday with a stop in Florida. It's there he called on Congress to defend Social Security and Medicare. Folks down fixed incomes rely on Social Security and Medicare to get by. They deserve a greater sense of security and dignity. The commander-in-chief took another swing at Republican proposals, including Florida Senator Rick Scott's plan to reauthorize Social Security and Medicare every five years. Nobody believes that I want to cut Medicare or Social Security. I've never said it. Maybe he's changed his mind. Maybe he's seen the Lord. But, <laughs> but he's one of the sunset, meaning if you don't reauthorize it, it goes away. In the meantime, back in Washington... On this vote, the yeas are 419, the nays are zero. The House passed a resolution condemning China's use of a suspected spy balloon that was shot down by the U.S. over the weekend, as senators also held a hearing. There was no hostile act or hostile intent. To question top Pentagon officials who say China had equipment on board to collect and monitor intel signals, adding that the PRC has a fleet of balloons that targeted five continents in more than 40 countries. A violation of airspace is a violation of airspace. And to know absolutely that this was of no military threat to us, boy, I want to hear more about that in classified session too. And while the Pentagon investigates in another story, the Nicaraguan government released more than 200 political prisoners, many of whom arrived right here in the Washington area moments ago. The former inmates include political and business leaders, as well as journalists and students who were found guilty of treason and charged with serious crimes. Many of the arrests stem from events leading up to the 2021 election against current Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega. The U.S. is now providing them with medical and legal support. And at least one of those prisoners we're talking about is an American. I'll have more on this story coming up at 6. Reporting live at the White House, Ben Kennedy, Local 10 News.